Okay, I'm a bit late getting to this one, but when I watched Dune Part 2, there was one sequence that I was and still am completely obsessed with. The Harkonnen homeworld, Getty Prime, and its land drained of colour overlooked by its black sun. It is so eerie. Like, I don't actually know how to describe how I was feeling in the moment of watching that and on a massive screen as well. It was so unsettling, but it was also completely perfect. Now it's had me thinking for the past year, yes, I drafted this like a year ago, <laughs> could something like a black sun actually exist somewhere out there in the universe? Short answer is no, not really, unfortunately. But the long answer is way cooler than just no. Let me explain. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Now, in this context, black isn't technically a color. It's the absence of visible light or the complete absorption of it. You see, stars by their nature don't work like that. They're hot. <laughs> and when something is really hot, it radiates energy across a huge chunk of the electromagnetic spectrum. So like infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, all of it. The color of a star then, or what we deem the color of it, depends mainly on two things. You have the surface temperature, and you have the wavelengths of the light that it emits most strongly. Now, our own sun emits light across almost the entire visible spectrum, and it does it pretty evenly. And when you blend these wavelengths of light together, the true color then of the sun is actually white. Not yellow, not orange like we see in the sky, it's white. Okay, side note though, because there is a slight peak in the green part of the spectrum, so we could technically say that our sun is more green than any other colour. But the peak isn't strong enough to shift how we actually see it, so it still appears white. But I like to say our sun is green, because, you know, I just, just want to be difficult. Anyway, okay, so you might be wondering though, why does the sun look yellow if I'm saying that it's white? It's not because the sun's colour changes, it's just that it's down to the way that light travels through the Earth's atmosphere. Now, our atmosphere, because it's dense and it's filled with particles, it scatters light. And the types of particles that are in our atmosphere tend to scatter shorter wavelengths of light. So things like blues and violets. And they do that a lot more than longer wavelengths like reds and yellows. So by the time the sunlight actually travels through the atmosphere and reaches our eyes, most of the blue light has scattered out of it, leaving the light from the sun looking warmer, more yellow and more orange. So it's actually just a trick of distance and scattering effects. Out in space though, away from our atmosphere, the sun shines white. Now, if you take that idea and if we push it a little bit, we get to could we have a star that looks black? Now, still no, not in the same way, because like I said, black isn't actually a colour on the electromagnetic spectrum. So the only way to really get a star to appear black would be to have the light it emits be made of wavelengths of light that are not in the visible part of the spectrum. But there's actually no natural way to get a star that's hot enough to be a star, but somehow also invisible in the visible spectrum. It just doesn't happen. Because even the hottest, hottest stars out there, the ones that peak in things like ultraviolet or x-ray parts of the spectrum, they still pump out huge amounts of visible light. So they tend to look bluish white to human eyes. They wouldn't look black. However, are we looking at the black sun of Getty Prime with human eyes? Methinks not. <laughs> So have you ever seen images of our own sun taken in ultraviolet or x-ray? You see, you can see that sometimes it looks like there are dark spots or even giant holes on the surface. Now these are real features. They're things like sunspots or like coronal mass ejections. 
They're not actual holes in the sun. I know I've seen some viral videos that claim that, but they're not holes. There ain't no holes there. They just show up as black or dark regions in those images because they're cooler and they're emitting less radiation at those particular wavelengths, just in those parts of the sun. In normal visible light, the sun would still just shine as brightly as ever. We're just filtering the image to highlight certain parts of its behavior. So even when we look at an image of the sun that looks like it's maybe a little bit black, it's not actually black. It's just a trick of how we're observing it in scientific imagery, depending on the wavelengths that we're looking at. So how did Dune make its black sun or just, you know, the entire vibe of the Harkonnen homeworld? Well, according to reports, Denis Villeneuve imagined that the Harkonnen sun was still super, super hot, but just emitting in the infrared region. So huge amounts of energy, but just shifted out of the range human eyes can detect. And to bring that idea into the screen, Greg Frazier, who was the cinematographer, shot the entire Getty Prime sequence with modified infrared cameras. Now, infrared light has longer wavelengths than visible light. It's there, it's just invisible to us. And in infrared photography, what's happening is you're not capturing color the way you normally would with a normal camera. You're capturing heat and energy just beyond the edge of human vision. But not just that, it's also about how the heat and the energy interacts with the world and it leads to incredible images. So normally in infrared photography, foliage and plants reflect infrared light. So they often look bright or a bit ghostly. Water and human skin, on the other hand, absorb infrared, making them appear darker, uh, flatter, a, a, a bit weirder. Uh, this is why the landscape in the scenes looks so drained and why people's skin tones flatten out, why everything feels so perfectly alien. You're seeing a completely different version of reality, not based on what reflects light to your eyes, but on what reflects or absorbs heat. And the thing is, once you film something in infrared, you can't just like color correct it back afterwards. You're stuck with whatever the sensor captured. So Frazier and the team filmed the entire sequence that way, knowing that they only had one shot to get it right. And it worked. It's not just a visual trick, it's a physics trick. Like, it's such a simple idea. Just shift light out of the visible spectrum, show a world lit by a sun that we couldn't see. But the effect it's creating, it's so unsettling, but also completely unforgettable. It's just one of those choices that doesn't just look good on the screen. It changes how you feel about it as you're sitting there watching it. I think I need to go watch it again right now. Okay, that's it for me and the Black Sun. Thanks for watching. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new here, like, subscribe, stick around for more sci-fi science nerd outs, and I will see you next time. Stay nerdy.